Hi everyone, it's Kevin Annett and it's March 4th. I'm reading again from the latest book we published called Murder by Decree about the crimes of genocide in Canada but where they came from historically. And of course all roads lead to Rome when it comes to mass murder in, on our planet. Um, right at the back of this definitive work is in Appendix 4 we actually reprint the document called Crimen Solicitanus, which is a Vatican document uh, released from the secret Vatican archives 10 years ago to the London Observer newspaper. And I want to quote from it the policy that's still in existence in the Catholic Church, which has been responsible for so many of these crimes against children and the cover-up. It refers to the uh, abuse of children. They don't use that term abuse, of course. It's solicitation. Uh, and it says, quote, because what is treated in these cases has to have a greater degree of care and observance. They are to be restrained by a perpetual silence. Each and everyone pertaining to the tribunal or investigation in these matters is to observe the strictest secret, which is commonly regarded as a secret of the holy office." Unquote. Now those words secret and holy office means you can't talk about child rape in the Catholic Church. Let me continue to read. As the secret of the Holy Office, in all matters and with all persons, under the penalty of excommunication. That means if you talk about the rape of children, you're excommunicated. If you tell the police about it, you're excommunicated. You have to choose between doing the right thing and doing what the Church says. Now this policy was the blueprint for the not only a green light to any child rapist in any Indian residential school, but still today, anyone who rapes a child in the Catholic Church gets away with it because they're protected by the policy from the Holy Office, which means the Pope himself. Now, recently in the news, we heard about yet another case in Pennsylvania of hundreds of Catholic priests who were raping children and then protected by the local bishop. Well, what's never mentioned in these media accounts and the uh, court cases that sometimes come out of them is the fact that the bishop was simply doing what he was ordered to do by the Pope. It's standing policy to protect child rapists and not to tell the police. That's known as a criminal conspiracy under the law. And anyone who puts money in a Catholic collection plate is aiding and abetting a crime. This is the bigger repercussion of murder by decree. It isn't just about crimes of genocide in Canada. It's where those crimes came from and how it's still traceable to Rome and the policies of every Pope, including the present Pope Francis, despite his whole visage of reform and niceness. He still stands by this policy of crimin solicitanus. So this is a wake-up call to the people now of the earth, not just of Canada. We have to take back our nation and the laws from the criminals that are aiding and abetting these crimes of church and state. Follow the work itccs.org. Order both our books, Murder by Decree and Unrelenting, between Sodom and Zion. Order them both at amazon.com and contact me come and speak in your community and do readings from these books, uh, write to me at hiddenfromhistory1 at gmail.com. Thank you.